Hey guys, in this video, we'll look at Blixer Plus UI for the Mi 11X, Poco F3, uh, which is also known as the Redmi K40 in other regions. So, in this video, we'll go over the ROM, its features, my experience using it, as I've been using it for a couple of days now, battery life, idle drain, and some bench box. And in the later part of the video, we'll see how to install it. So, let's get started. So this is what the home screen looks like. It's a default pixel launcher. So if I long tap on the home screen, I get home settings, widgets and wallpapers. Home settings is the same. Wallpapers is the same. So material you want, I can select the colors according to the wallpaper. I can select solid colors, dark theme, themed icons, app grid. As you can see, app grid and widgets. Now, a lot of you might know it, but this is one of my favorite things about this widget, about Material U widget. So if I take a clock, let's take analog one, uh, put it right here. Let's select numeral because it's the most prominent one. Let's just reduce the size. So as you can see this color, if I change it, the color of the clock changes as per the wallpaper. This is so cool. So looking at the notification shade. It is the default notification shade that Android 12 AOSP has to offer. But there are some extra features like FPS info. If I tap on it, I get an FPS meter right here. Also, you have CPU info. So if you want to see the current clock rate of your CPU cores, this is helpful. Now, this ROM had Atmos. Let me just disable this. This ROM had Atmos, but the developer removed it in a latest build and we'll add it later on because um, as per the telegram support group that i'm reading they are saying they will implement something new and which is pretty good compared to all the dolmi atmos mod that we have so there's that also there's one more thing refresh it toggle so that's the basic one i it is set to 120 hertz i can tap on it it will set it will change back to 60 hertz let's keep it to 120 also this brightness slider so i can just change my brightness or I can just tap here and turn off automatic brightness. Tap again and turn on automatic brightness. Apart from this, there are there are two more toggles that I like. You see this internet toggle. It is internet toggle in Pixel ROMs. But if I tap on edit and if I scroll down, here I have Wi-Fi and mobile data. So I can select Wi-Fi. I can just turn on and turn off Wi-Fi from here. I do not have to go to the internet toggle and then turn on and off the Wi-Fi. I can just do it from that tile. Same goes for mobile data. Okay, let's jump into the settings and let's see what all this ROM has to offer. So the first thing is pixelize. They should change this particular icon. Anyways, moving, going to that, we have Mone customization. So if I want a custom color for my, for my phone, I can do that. Anyways, status bar, network traffic display. So if I'm using my Wi-Fi, I will have indicators right here how much download speed I'm getting, how much upload speed I'm getting. Then you have clock and date settings, battery slide. So if I want portrait battery cells, circle or text, I can get here. Uh, showing percentages. So as you can see, it's 42% right now. I can turn it off. It will vanish. I'll turn it on. Then it's show percent inside. I can just turn it on and for two will be inside that. I just hate this because I will not be able to say that 42. And then privacy indicator toggles i can just turn it off and the dots won't appear anyways going back i have quick settings so i can show a qs footer text if i turn it on and if i go to like notification shade you can see pixel plus ui and then there's back estimate so nothing is being shown right here if i just turn it on you see it says i have until 15 that's 3 pm so i can use my phone till that if i with this kind of usage. Turn it off. Let's go to buttons. So volume panel on the left. So volume pan panel is on the right. If I turn it on, it will be on the left. Also volume panel, if I just expand it, let me just expand it. And this is the expanded volume panel. This looks pretty cool in my opinion. Anyways, let's turn this off. Buttons. We have already gone through that lock screen. So for small clock, lock screen charging info, if I put on my charger, it will show my charging info. Notifications, you can see what it says, blink flashlight for incoming calls, vibrate on connect, call waiting or disconnect. Going back, 
miscellaneous launch music app on headset connection invert three button navigation bar so i'm not using three button navigation bar i use gestures anyways going back now network and internet is the same connected device apps notifications is the same storage is the same sound is the same display is the same so you have adapted brightness lock screen dark theme if i turn on dark theme it will go to dark theme let's keep it light the wig thing now this is something which i saw back in the re back in the days where i used to flash custom roms a lot back when lean there was no linear choice there was synergen mod so i used to have the smallest wig pretty cool night light colors so four color modes and you have color balance too so custom modes natural boosted saturated adaptive and i can select my color balance anyways double tap to sleep double tap on lock screen to sleep auto rotate i'm in equals eq so it will adjust your eq based on the ambient sound so also the sound on this is not very good you have to flash you will have to flash some dolby mod but none of the dolby mods are as good as the me ui dolby dolby atmos mod it's not a mod it's a feature in me ui so none of the mods are as good as me ui dolby atmos anyways minimum refresh rate 6120 and same goes for maximum and status bar items and ambient display ambient display is always on display so as you can see in a couple of seconds it should be turned on and okay as you can see always on display let's just unlock the device again go back let's turn off i'm in display back again wallpapers is the same accessibility security privacy location safety information password everything is the same now system now there are some things here like gestures same gestures as you have in other ASP ROMs. Here's updater. So if a new update is available, you can use this. Yes, this supports OTS. So you can just download the update, click on install. It will take some time, but you can use your phone and it will just ask you to reboot. You reboot your phone and you will be on your latest Pixel Plus UI. But this downside, you will lose your custom recovery as well as root for that to work you have to flash root on a second slot moving on to battery the battery was very good on this uh this is my secondary phone i only used it for media or gaming so yes i have a sim installed here just to check how it does with idle tree for how long it lasted it lasted for, me for more than a day I installed this one Franco kernel manager to check out the screen on time on on this device as well as if it was going to de-sleep as well as idle tree. Now this particular kernel manager showed that I got a SOT of around six and a half to seven hours by just using media or gaming. That's pretty good. And I didn't use it for calls and all. Maybe if you use it for that, it will be a bit less. As for idle train, it was about three to four percent. That is from 12 a.m. to 9 p.m. And it got reduced to two percent when I flashed the NO kernel. Now Someone in the comments just told me that you should flash this kernel and NO kernel is pretty good. So there's that. Moving on to charging, the charging is just fine. It's not fast as MIUI, but no custom ASP ROMs charging is as fast as MIUI. With Ampere app, I noticed that it got a peak of 22.23 watts with a 33 watt Mi charger. Now for battery, there are a few things like thermal profile. So let it let the list load yeah i can select thermal profiles for each of them let's say for my this app one dm plus i can select benchmark browser camera dialer gaming and streaming so it will adjust the profile and use the battery as per that so that's pretty cool now there are some weird things or bugs that are found like if i'm watching a video on netflix in pip mode there are status in the us so let's say if i launch netflix is netflix say if i just type in test patterns or this one has great visuals to blue planet our planets okay so if i just play this let's reduce the volume okay 
So here's our plan. Here's a Netflix video. I'll go to PIP mode. Uh, you saw that shutter. That's one. If I just pull down my notification sheet, I will get a stutter. As you can see, when I'm pulling it up, when I'm going into app drawer, I get a stutter. As you can see. So that's the thing that I noticed. Now, after the latest OT update, as I told you, this supports OT updates. There were random reboots when I was watching Netflix. Now, this got solved as soon as I flashed the Eno kernel, and the link of that particular kernel will be in the description below. All that's left are benchmarks. So, with Geekbench, before going to the scores, if you're looking for benchmarks, this is not a great ROM, but it's very fluid, it works pretty great, and yeah. In terms of, I forgot, in terms of gaming, it supports 90 FPS on PUBG, 120 FPS on Call of Duty. So, if you are a PUBG gamer or BGMI gamer and you want 90 Hz, you can get it with this one. Anyways, with Geekbench 5, if I just go to history, my first test, I got a score of 681 on single and 1552 on multi. Now this is like half the score of other custom ROMs that I've tried but as I told in that particular group also benchmarks don't mean a lot. Now this is the score that I got when I flashed the Eno kernel. It's still low but the ROM is so fluid everything works very well. So that's why I said benchmarks don't mean that much. Anyways since a lot of people want to know benchmarks let's go to Antutu. Antutu. And here I got a score of 6,56,282, which is also less than MIUI. Anyways, uh, there's one more benchmark. I believe it's CPU throttle. So let me just pull up my photos. So as you can see, this is the CPU throttle test. It did not do that much, that great. The CPU throttle to 87%. And you can see the average maximum and minimum score on your screen. Just pause the video and see the scores. That's it. Anyways, this was Plexus Plus UI. So this is how the ROM looks like, how it functions, my experience, etc. and etc. Now let's see how to install it. Now there are a few prerequisites here. The first thing is MIUI. If you don't know how to install MIUI or how to revert back to MIUI, there's a card right here. I believe it's right here. And a link of that will be in the description below. The third thing is a custom recovery. So if you don't know how to install a custom recovery, Again, a card and a link in the description below. Now for this particular ROM, we will use SKK TWRP. Now the great thing about SKK TWRP is that under 12 is decryptable on SKK TWRP. Now let's just revert back our phone to MIUI and we will continue. Now here we have installed MIUI on our Mi 11X Poco F3 or the Redmi K40. Now all you have to do is turn off your phone. So power off and turn it off in a few seconds it will be powered off now you have to go to recovery so volume up and power button at the same time in a few seconds you will get the me logo you'll get a vibration and after you get that vibration just leave it this is skk twrp great thing about this is under 12 is just decryptable on this anyways if you don't know how to install it, there will be a link in the description below and a card right here. Also, the files there are there will be two files as I've already mentioned, a firmware file and a ROM file. Now, since I am already on MIUI, I need not install the firmware file, although the developer recommends it. It will be in the description below. Anyways, I'll just connect my ODG to my phone and let's hit install. Nothing is done. Okay. OTG is here. So here's Pixel Plus UI and just make sure automatically reflash WRP after flashing a ROM is selected. Anyways, after that is done, swipe to confirm and it will start flashing. So flashing AB zip to inactive slot B and it will take a couple of minutes. So I recommend grab a cup of coffee and we'll be back. And by the power of video editing, I'll speed this up. So you got some errors. Now you can just ignore them. That's fine. Anyways, now it's reflashing TWRP. So let's just wait for a bit. 
anyways i'll just wipe dalvik now all that is left is i will go to reboot and then recovery and if you get this thing just don't worry just swipe to confirm anyways in a couple of seconds i will be booted into detail warp again now all you all that's left to do is go to wipe for my data type in y e s yes and wait for a couple of seconds that's done just go to reboot system and it's done you get the me logo and in a couple of seconds you will get the google logo i'll just remove this pen drive right now as you can see the google logo is here so this is how you install pixel plus ui on your me 11 x poco f3 or the redmi k40 so if you like the video give this video a thumbs up look something like this share with the friends so they also know how to install pixel os pixel plus ui on the mi 11x poke f3 or the redmi k40 comment for any queries regarding this rom if you want me to try any other benchmarks let me know in the comments below and since you're commenting hit that red subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos that i post that's it for this video i'll catch you in the next one